of all the sacraments that the Lord left us for our salvation, which one is the greatest? We might think, well, certainly baptism is an important sacrament because it washes away our sins. It fills us with the Holy Spirit and makes us children of God and prepares us for eternal life in heaven. Or maybe we think of anointing of the sick, which has the power to heal greater than any doctor on earth. Or maybe the sacrament of penance, by which our sins are forgiven. The burden of our sin and guilt is lifted from us and removed. All the sacraments give us grace from God, but there is one sacrament that not only gives us the grace of God, but actually is God himself, and that is the Eucharist. The sacrament of sacraments, the most blessed sacrament. Here in the Eucharist is contained Jesus himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Not long ago, there was a poll conducted of Catholics throughout the United States about their belief in the Eucharist. And over half said the Eucharist is only a symbol of Jesus. It isn't really Jesus that we eat his body and drink his blood. But what is the teaching that has been given to us by Jesus and handed on through the church. Jesus himself said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you do not have life within you. My flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. And many disciples left because they couldn't accept this teaching of Jesus and he allowed them to go. He didn't say, no, you misunderstood me. Uh, come back, I was just speaking symbolically. He was speaking literally, but they couldn't accept it. At the Last Supper is when Jesus gives us his body and blood. He takes the bread and says, This is my body, which will be given up for you. This is the chalice of my blood, which will be poured out for you. So how does this happen? The church has come to term this process transubstantiation, meaning a change of substance. The substance is what is something as opposed to the appearances. What does it look like and what does it taste like? The bread at Mass, when at the words of the Catholic priest, repeating the words of Jesus, the bread is changed in substance to the body of Christ. It still has the appearances of bread. It looks and tastes like bread, but that's not what it is anymore. Now it is the body of Christ. And similarly, the wine is changed into the blood of Christ. Jesus is truly and substantially present then in the Eucharist every time we celebrate Mass. How do we know this? By faith, because of the words of Jesus himself. There have been Eucharistic miracles, though, throughout the history of the world to help strengthen us in our faith. The first one that I would like to mention happened in 1224. And this was a priest who was celebrating Mass, struggling that in his own faith that the Eucharist actually became the body of Christ, that it became Jesus. And as he says the words of consecration, this is my body which will be given up for you, it happened in Bolsena, drops of blood began to fall from the host onto the corporal, the cloth on the altar, and the marble stones at the foot of the altar. They preserved this corporal as a relic, here's a picture of it, with all the blood stains from the host that began to bleed during that Mass. Uh, because of that, Pope Urban IV declared the feast day Corpus Christi, and he commissioned St. Thomas Aquinas to write some hymns in praise of Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, which will be singing later at this Mass. The next one was in Lanciano in the 8th century, and the same thing, the priest was doubting that the, that the Eucharist actually became the body of Christ. As he held up the host, it turned into flesh in his hand. And as he held up the chalice, it turned into real blood in the chalice. They preserved this for over 1,200 years. Here's the picture of the host uh, that has been turned into flesh and uh, the chalice containing the blood that is there. In the 1970s, they subjected these to scientific studies and found that the flesh is tissue from a heart. 
It has the myocardium, the endocardium, the vagus nerve, and the left ventricle. And the blood has proteins and minerals found in proportion that would be in fresh human blood. A few years ago in the 90s, there was a Eucharistic miracle in Argentina where a host had been dropped on the floor and they dissolved it in the water to prepare to dispose of it in the, in the special sink in the sacristy. But it didn't dissolve. After a while, it turned into a, a, a piece of tissue that looked like it had blood in it. And so they sent it to a scientist without telling him where it came from and said, can you examine this and tell us what it is? And he came back and said, this is tissue from a heart muscle. And it, and it looks like someone who has been subjected to extreme distress or torture. And when they explained what it was, he was overwhelmed in his own faith in the Eucharist. He compared it to the scientific studies of this other Eucharistic miracle from the 8th century, and he said the cells of this heart tissue are from the same man, it's the same person. This Eucharistic miracle in 1996 and the one in the 8th century. There are hundreds of Eucharistic miracles that have been taken place throughout the world to help us strengthen our faith that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist at Mass. Well, what does this mean for us? First of all, healing. Jesus healed many people when he was here with us, and he continues to heal us. When we receive the Eucharist, we are receiving Jesus, and we pray then for the gift of healing in our own lives with great faith in his power. Secondly, the presence of Christ in communion, to know that Jesus is coming into our soul when we receive communion. Not to, see, not to think of it as receiving an object, but it is the Lord himself. And so we show proper worship and love for the Lord in the Eucharist. And finally, adoration. Jesus says, remain with me. We have an opportunity to spend time with the Lord in adoration and prayer. So at the end of this Mass, uh, after communion, we'll have the Blessed Sacrament exposed on the altar for a brief period of adoration and benediction in which we receive a blessing from Jesus himself. <laughs>